Hello and welcome to ACS Golf and this week's review. Apologies if I'm a little bit croaky. It's supposed to be spring in the UK. The weather's supposed to be getting better and it's not great. It's pretty cold. So, of course, i am got it all. The joy, the joy of the British weather. Sometimes I really do think I need to move. But anyway, let's get into the club this week that I'm reviewing. And it is this, the Honda. TW5, uh, TW757S, sorry, driver in 10.5 degrees. Now, the reason I'm testing this this week is the 2022 model, but actually still their most recent. And I managed to pick this up. So this was an old, old stock at Silvermere, my local golf course. I went down there doing a sell and basically... This was a club where they've been using it, obviously, for people to test out for drivers, etc. when they go and get club fitted. And I managed to pick it up for under £100, £99 exactly. I've always wanted to try Honda. They make some really good products, but the price range of them is normally extremely high. We'll get into the price of this at the end of the video. But the price range is really normally very high. Now, it's also a club that a lot of people don't think about because... The advertising over here isn't that great. I'm assuming they do have some tall players. I'm not 100% sure. So if they do have any tall players and you guys know about it, do let me know down in the comments below. But over here in the UK, in the US, they're not necessarily a well-known brand. Obviously, over in Asia, they're really big. And one of the things about them is quality. You know, they do their own shafts, which are high-quality shafts. They've obviously got the range that... Beerus Reigns, I want to say. I know how to spell it, but, you know, which is high-end, really expensive stuff. So I've always wanted to get my hand on it for £99. What a great option. So, as always, you know, let's have a closer look at the club. Then I'll tell you about all the technology that's thrown into this, and believe me, there is a lot. <laughs> then we'll get down to range, test it, and I'll compare the figures to what I'd expect you know, what I'd normally get for my LTDX Cobra, which is my current driver, and what I'd sort of expect it to be and see, you know, if these guys match each other. So so there you go. And we'll go through the ACS Golf Scale as well. And I'll give you all the ratings there. So, yeah. So, firstly, let's have a look at the club. But before we do that, guys, do remember to subscribe to the channel. I had a look the other day and only 4% of people are subscribed who are watching the videos so do remember to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss anything like this you know as i said last week we've got some great reviews coming up of you know older clubs i mean i've got stealth behind me that i can't wait to take out on the course as well which will be coming soon so do remember to subscribe for more stuff like this more content so there you go now let's have a closer look at this well personally gorgeous looking club so there you go a closer look at the club now you know on the top i really do love the look of it I mean, that shiny matte crown. I mean, to be fair, for me, that is a spitting image of a Mizuno. You know, the STZ um, 2020, um, the G, which I did try actually as well. The review for that's out. It's very similar. We have that matte crown, obviously, because the carbon crown there. Um, I do miss an alignment aid. I do like that for someone who is, you know, a mid to high handicapper. It's always nice to have that sort of thing in there. But... I'll talk the figures to you about a second because it didn't actually affect the performance, actually. So maybe I need to get rid of an aid. Maybe that's uh, making my life worse by having that. So anyway, now let's go into the technology in this club. So I'm reading this off Homer's website themselves. You know, so much information in there was great. And also all about their older clubs as well. So do check it out if you're thinking about picking up any clubs from Homer because, like I said, they are really good. Just a tad pricey, which can be a sticking point for a lot of these. So, 
because before I just get into information, for example, this, if you read the majority of the views from last year about this club, a lot of them were saying it's one of the most underrated clubs at the year due to the performance. But because of the cost, a lot of people wouldn't try it. So we'll get further into the cost again later on. So let's get into the technology of this bad boy. So we have high elastic carbon, which delivers unprecedented initial ball speed and long carry. So covering the thin sole slot with carbon, here you go, strengthens the TW World's 757S driver's face while saving weight and increasing repulsion at impact. This yields the highest initial ball speed in Homner's history. So there you go. So that's just basically on the sole of the plate, sorry. So more carbon there. I mean, this thing with the majority of modern drivers, carbon, 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 apart from ping. Ping all titanium, their new G430 line, it's only the, I forgot what they call their low spinner, but it's only their low spinner that has carbon on the top. The rest of them is still just titanium. So going back into this we have the world's first carbon slot now that is there which is very interesting you know to have that sort of carbon space there you know obviously a lot of clubs do have something there to support the bottom of the face for miss hits but to have it carbon that's the first time i've heard of it so the thickness of the sole slit is thin to maximize repulsion performance and it's reinforced with carbon to maintain the strength as a result it succeeds in maximizing repulsion performance so the idea is you know having that carbon slot here miss hits on the face it's still going to help that ball get out and well just be nice and quick <laughs> off the face so there you go now we've seen this before man a lot of drivers here so i will say there's two models of this so you have the tw well, 757s and then you have the d now the s is a more sort of lower spinner better playing club uh the cc of this is actually 455 so technique is a little bit smaller than your normal obviously 460 driver such as this and you can tell as well with sort of the face where then you can see there but the cobra is a little bit more elongated with the idea the more weight at the back to help with launch moi etc while this is far more sort of compact you can really tell by the side there this is more compact um, which is more of a sign really of a better player's driver and more of a sign of a low spinning beast. Um, so, and this is another prime example, you know, with these with these two removable weights. I mean, PXG do removable weights at the moment. I mean, if you look at this, you know, the uh, the Stealth 2 um, Plus, I think Stealth 2 Plus or the Stealth Plus, you know, they have the movable weight at the front with the idea. So, would you go in this? The front and back weights are interchangeable. So we have a nine and a three. So this helps maximizing performance by optimizing the weight positions to a golf or swing type or required trajectory. Now, here you go. So front, we have the three gram at the front and nine gram at the back, which is standard weight. This achieves effortlessly high launch and straight ball flight. And also the idea that that will actually help with MOI and more forgiveness. Now, if you put the front nine grams at the front and then move the three to the back, this achieves initial higher ball speed, strong trajectory, and enable spin control. So basically it becomes less forgiving, but becomes that little bit more of that spin monster by moving the weight to the front of the club face, which obviously when you're looking at the better drivers, you know, the furthest, the, you know, let's be honest, hardest to hit, the better player, the better player driver, sorry, you always have that sort of weight right at the front of the face to increase that ball speed, lower trajectory and keep that spin rate down because that's the main aim of the game, lower spin rate to get that ball to travel further. So there we go. Now, so behind here, behind the face, there's a new vertical slot club face. So this for, sorry, I was wrong. So I said this was a 455 CEC, which I've read numerous times on review other reviews but this actually homer is saying this is a 450 cc so i uh, stand corrected so apologies this is actually 450 cc rather than the 455 i mentioned earlier so just said sometimes you can't believe we hear about and read about reviews can you so 450 so 10 lower than the 460 so there you go so 450 cc 
driver features the most effective vertical slot club face for miss hits from the upper and lower club face. It maintains maintains high initial ball speed even on miss hits because it's increasing the repulsion power on the wider areas of the club face. So basically, they've got vertical lines here and sort of like a slot here in the beginning in the front of the face to basically make it more forgiving and keep that ball speed up and run across the face, which is a key factor for a lot of more modern day drivers, you know, ball speed from the middle, you know, really under guidelines, etc. They're there, they're at the max over the past couple of years. But one way to do it is now to keep that ball speed up across the whole face. So that's why this year, everything for new clubs 2023 is all about forgiveness. And this is what Honda obviously 2022 was doing as well. Now, obviously, as I mentioned before, we have a nice shiny carbon crown on top. Cross carbon is adapted to carbon composite structure to enhance the head repulsion performance by crown rebonding. That reduces weight and enables the ideal CG design. You know, whole point, carbon crown, mentioned many times before, is to be able to move the weight around the club and get that sort of ball flight and forgiveness, etc. And we're still going. So, I mean, the amount of tech in this thing is ridiculous. So, now we've got a crown rib. So, this is right on the bottom. Oh, no, sorry, on the top here. It's on the crown. So, just here. So, carbon fibers there. And when it stops, we've got a crown rib here and just two lines, roughly about there. The rib maintains rigidity around the club face and efficiently uses the rebounding carbon energy, high initial ball speed. The two thick and long ribs prevent over rebound in the wide areas. So keeps the face torn again to keep that ball speed up and the forgiveness. And here we go, here we go further. Now we've got the keel design. So there you go, nice little kill there. A very much, you know, like you look at your tailor made stealth. A bit of a kill, obviously, there as well with a cobra. Very much a position of lowering, putting the weight at the back. Placing the weight at the outside of the sole achieves lower and deep CG, you know, increases MOI. So there you go. Now they've got a PSAT precision spine control. The spine is identically on all clubs to stabilize shaft movements and retain consistency through the set. And this is basically to do with the way they attach the club. So with this, you see sort of there, you actually sit on it. You don't actually have to take the shaft out. I have taken the shaft out for this video because I've hit myself in the face with a golf shaft, which I don't particularly want to be doing. <laughs> but the idea is it can sit there, it's more rigid, it stays there, and also there's a non-rotating system where you can unscrew it and then move it around without actually having to take the shaft out, which is quite good. And then finally, you know, loft-wise for this, you can get it in 10.59 degrees only, so there's only two loft options, the same as well for the D version, which is the draw version, there'll be a weight down here for that. And then you've got adjustability with all modern day drivers is always good. Plus or minus one degrees. Um, you can adjust the lie angle by two degrees more upright or adjust the face angle as well by 1.5 degrees either way to open it or close it. So for more draw bias or more fade bias, etc. So, you know, really good club. And then finally, when it comes down to Honda, they actually use their own shaft, well, Pacific shaft that's made for them which is the Vizard FP65 I got here, the stiff. Now, what I will say about this, and I'll say this about Homna, is, and their grips, they've got their own grips as well, which are very nice. All very premium product, but very light. And that's one thing to work, think about. If you like the heavier sort of club, I wouldn't say Homna's for you straight off the bat, because they are very light, you know, it's it's just the way they build them. They're very light. And then some of them as well, are, you know, if you go for regular, they're very, very whippy. So do be aware of that. So there you go. So there's all the technology in this. Took a while to get through, didn't it? Now, let's get down to sand down. I'll run through the figures with you and show you some of the ball flights with this, which to be fair, I was really happy with. Um, even though my swing looked as dodgy as always, I was getting some really nice ball flights with it. And then we'll go through the ACS golf scale at the end and we'll discuss pricing and how it did performance wise. So, yeah. And then, will I 
be taking my trusty Cobra out of the bag, LTDX, which I adore. So we will discuss that at the end as well. So there you go. Let's get down Sandown and let's see how this guy did on the range. So here I am down at Sandown and always nice to start with a sky ball. So there you go. Really trying to turn the driver into a 9-iron here. Now, let's jump into the figures. So for me, with a driver, I'm looking at around 260 total yards on average and also about 150 miles per hour ball speed. So the figures I got with the Homna was this. So total carry on average was 238 total distance was 254 yards ball speed was 148 miles per hour launch angle 11 and height 76 feet so really just underneath what i'd want now that's mainly down to really i think more the forgiveness of the club this is the low spinning sort of less forgiving club if i take out two of the sort of the bad shots where the ball speed was around that 140 mark then I'm getting the average of 150. I'm getting the average of 260 total distance. So really, this club was really on the money for distance. You know, the longest shot I had was 272 total yards. Ball speeds around 120 miles an hour, 152 miles an hour, sorry. And also, you know, got another one over 267. So really happy with performance and the distance. And also, really the dispersion of the club as well. It's very much all similar shots, apart from obviously that sky one as well very much all relatively quite close together so generally very happy so there you go the figures from the homeless tw 757s god i wish that sometimes you know you can be really mouthful these drivers can't they that's what i like the ltdx ltdx no. there you go anyway so there you go from the figures now what can i say really happy with it really happy with the ball flight did exactly what it did on the tin i kept it at 10.5 degrees you know, I didn't swap the weights around either. I kept it sort of really standard, really to compare it against my LTDX, you know, which is the more normal version. It's not the low spinning LS version. So I didn't really want to be swapping the weights around and changing that because I wanted to compare it to this. Now, as mentioned, you know, with this, 260 is what I'm looking for, around 150 miles per hour. Ball speed for me on average is great. Um, if I really hit it, sometimes I get further. Obviously, bad hits can get a lot worse. So, but that's what I range at. And as mentioned, you know, total distance on average was 254 yards. But, you know, there's two hits in there. If I take it out, we're at the 260, which is perfect. Longest, 272 yards. Can't complain about that. Ball speed, 148 miles per hour. Again, if I take out those two bad hits, we're at that 150 mark. We're spot on. And we, you know, there's quite a few, you know, we had 152, 151. So we really were leaking over it as well. So really impressed. So let's get into the ACS golf scale where we're going through distance, feel, looks, price and forgiveness. Okay. Um, we'll start with forgiveness this time. Remember, it's out of five, five being the best and then one being the lowest. Shocking the most ridiculous thing in the world but yes so forgiveness i've given this a three so i've given it a three out of five now, that's not bad because remember this is you know it's 450 this is the more players club this isn't their most forgiving model this is the low spinning monster that would be against you know really is aimed against the cobra ltdx ls sorry at the time obviously the stealth plus so it's not their most forgiving model. So, you know, three out of five is not that bad. But just the fact, you know, like I've said, you know, on average, I want ball speed about 150. I had those two bad shots there where the ball speed dropped from, well, on average, 150, really, all the way down to 139. So I lost 10 miles per hour. And another one for 141, which, again, I lost 10 miles per hour. And I lost, you know, yeah, I lost some distance as well with it. So... Not the most forgiving. Anywhere around the middle, pretty consistent, to be fair. But obviously, if you're starting to get there, you can struggle. I mean, some of my bad shots, I have hit it here on the right on the toe, and it still goes to yardage pretty much with this. I wouldn't bag it to. Not the end of the world. Don't get me wrong. It was consistent. It was pretty straight. There was no huge miss hits. So happy with that but i feel if you're going for the more distance and you swap that nine with that three it becomes that low spinning monster 
all the bad hits is just going to be elevated and it's going to get worse. You know, the idea actually, um, I was watching a video by SAS Golf. Uh, do check him out. It's very good. Uh, you know, he used to be a fitter, et cetera. And he was saying about how, you know, we're all, when, all for drivers all the time, you know, we're trying to go for that low spin because low spin equals distance. But having a bit more of a higher spin driver means that your bad shots are not as bad. So if you slice it with a higher spin driver, it won't necessarily go all the way over there. It might stay in play a little bit more. So lowering the spin isn't always a good thing. So I just feel like if I move that nine to the front, I think we could have definitely got some more distance, but I think it would become even less forgiving. So that's why I've given it a three out of five. Now, on to feel. Mixing up a little bit here. I'm going for 3.5 out of five. It felt good. It felt premium. I would hope so. You know, these are expensive clubs when they first came out. It felt good, but it just didn't feel as powerful as, you know, the LTDX. You know, when I hit that, it feels just power. Sometimes I hit it badly and it, I think, look up, I think it's going to go miles and it doesn't because it just feels really hot, really powerful off the face. When this was a bit more duller feel, it was still nice, but it just didn't have that sort of boom power that's what i want so not bad but not great 3.5 out of 5 but for me anyway some people might love this feel it might be 5 out of 5 that more duller feel but for me it wasn't looks i'm going it a 4 out of 5 because you know i love that carbon crown on the top and that gloss look don't get me wrong i do feel like when you look at i mean i can see my reflection in it now just seeing sat in here so i feel like it could be quite blinding and distracting on the golf course. So they, I mean, look, you can see out my window. And so that's the only issue I have with gloss tops. You know, you don't get blinded. I mean, I remember seeing once, and I've said it before in one of my videos, I had a Mizuno ST Z, and I was looking at it, and I could see the clouds going across it, <laughs> which not exactly what you want when you're about to hit a drive. Very pretty, but not what I wanted to see when I was hitting a drive. So really like the look of it, but again, I gone down a rabbit hole there, but you know, four out of five because I love the black look. I do love the black bottom of it with the white. I love the simplicity of it. I think it's a very good driver. The shafts maybe could be a little bit better, but you know that blue gloss look. But anyway, really nice, really pretty. Four out of five. Now we're getting on the two main things about this club: the distance and the price. So. Let's go into the distance first. For me, four out of four point five out of five. Sorry, that's a four point five out of five. This thing is a beast. Like I said, it got to the figures I was expecting. You know, good hits. Got to that two seven two. I mean, the amount that we sort of got over the two sixties. Quite a few shots over the two sixties around that two seventy. So, you know. It is a monster, and that's not even in its monster setting. That's with the weight at the back. You know, if you want to, you can optimize it, put it to, to the front to really get that low spin and get even more distance. So, distance is 4.5 out of 5. I saw one chap who reviewed this against the Stealth Plus at the time, and this thing was going further. So, it is an absolute monster if you're looking out there and you want distance. I think it's a great option because of the adjustability of it, because you can make it, you know, a normal club, which is, you know, higher ball speed that matches the Cobra T LTX, which is one of the longest drivers last year. Don't forget that. This thing's awesome. But then you can switch it around to make it low spin beast. So, yeah, 4.5 out of 5. Really impressed with the performance for distance wise. Um, yeah, very nice. Now, price so me picking this up for 99 pounds was an absolute steal this originally came out for 559 pounds in the uk which is just under 700 dollars in the us that's a very expensive price i mean back last year i mean a lot of the new drivers now are around that price anyway especially this year where they've gone up a lot like the paradigm for example but this is very punchy when it comes down to the price and a lot of people don't think about it. So it did struggle now. And this is another thing that they were saying in the reviews are like, you know, most like sort of underrated driver of the year, really good performance, long, you know, for what it is, forgiving as well, the playability of it, 
etc etc but the price was a sticking point because you know would you go out and spend 550 pounds nearly 700 dollars on a club that you don't really know that much about probably not to be fair when you could go for a tailor maybe you go for Callaway rogue st which was great last year you know save yourself quite a bit of money and go for the cobra um ltdx so for me price at the moment is 2.5 out of five now you can find some steals with this. Like I said, I picked this up for £99 at my local golf, uh, golf course. So, golf course, golf club. So, you can pick it up for £99. I pick it, it because people don't think of it. So, there will be a point where they clear the stock and you'll be able to find this for an absolute steal. So, at the moment, it's 2.5. You know, online eBay, you're looking at sort of the cheapest I found it was £214. And with no head cover, I didn't get a head cover with this either. Um, which is about $260, you know, if you're brand new though, you can pick up brand new, not that bad actually, brand new £369, about $460, that's not bad brand new, to be fair, this is still technically Honda's current model, so, you know, you if you're looking to go get tested, it's definitely, and you want to buy a new driver, it's definitely worth having a look at it, to be fair, because you're still saving yourself with £369, probably, 150 quid in going for one of the main competitors this year so if you're looking brand new it's not that bad so that's why i got the 2.5 you know do check it out if you're looking second hand in the second hand market at the moment let's go cobra ltdx really long forgiving you know and you can get these for under 200 pounds at the moment so so there you go so that's why it's 2.5 out of five but keep your eye out for them because no one thinks about them, especially over here in the UK. So the price will drop further and you'll get some absolute bargains of these. I guarantee you, like I did for £99, because the amount of club that is, that is an absolute bargain. So there you go. Now, the question for me, am I going to replace my Cobra? show you the bottom of it my cobra ltdx with this homna and the answer is i'm oh, not nice. i want to i think this is great i do i think it's longer i can possibly get this definitely longer than this one you know i'm quite used to the light shaft and the cobra so the being the light shaft i'm actually quite happy with that but i know if i put it in the bag I'm going to miss this just from my consistency with it hitting fairways after fairways after fairways. So it's not going to go in my bag. But if someone said to me right now, you've got to get rid of this. I would quite happily pick that up to replace it, to be fair. So it's not coming. Cobra is still in my bag, but this is an awesome driver. And to be honest, if I made the decision to put it in there, I don't think I would regret it. So. There you go, the review of the Homna 757, like you want to say in the 747, 757S. Oh, not a good point, actually, saying the 747. Have a look at that one. It's also a very good driver, and it's a lot cheaper on the second-hand market because people haven't, don't think about Homna, so do check that one out. But there you go, lovely performing club. Really, really impressive from last year, 2022, so do keep your eye out for it. There you go now. Leave a comment down below if you have played Honda before. Remember to subscribe to the channel, guys, please. It would mean a lot. And also give this video a like if you like it. Now, apologies. This is probably one of my longest ones ever. But I just love sticking the technology in this thing. So I just had to tell you all about it. So there you go. And I'll catch you guys next week. Have a good one. And enjoy some golf. Hopefully the weather is better where you are. Bye-bye.